Times Podcast. Wait me, don't you? Hit that like button, subscribe, and share. Wait me, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Thank you for the round of applause. Thank you for the round of applause. Wait me, don't you? Kind of motherfucking podcast, episode one thirty one. See, I'm holding this mic today. You know what I'm saying? Rest in peace to the to, to the boomstick. You know that shit then snapped at the rear, broke off yesterday. I knew it was coming. So till I get another one, I'm gonna be holding this motherfucker. You feel me? Real, real, real podcast shit now, man. You feel me? <laughs> nah, but yeah, holding this shit though. You know what I'm saying? I don't mind holding this shit though. You know, it's all good. But yeah, though, Cons Podcast episode one thirty one. You know what I mean? Uh, today, you know what I'm saying? Uh, today we're just gonna be talking about Cameron Diaz. We're gonna go over that. Cameron Diaz, Jamie Fox. Uh, uh, Meek Mill, you know what I'm saying? Meek Mill ran into a fan. We're gonna touch on that. Diddy's son responded to Meek Mill, what he said with the fan. We're gonna touch on that. T Pain and Mark Zuckerberg went in the studio, made a song, made a cover for Get Low. Lord have mercy. LeBanion fired a drone into Israel, hit a nursery. We're gonna touch on them. So that's what we're gonna be touching on today. Episode 131. How y'all been? How y'all been doing? You know what I'm saying? Thursday. Thursday. I guess I'm going to add a little segment in at the end and shit. Touch on this Jake Paul shit, too. Jake Paul and Mike Tyson being at that shit is tomorrow. I know everybody going to be fucking tuning in. 200 and some million whatever subscribers that got that's on Netflix. Everybody going to be watching that shit. I'm definitely going to be watching that shit. So I'm going to just say my little piece at the end of this shit once I go over these five topics and touch on that Jake Paul and uh, Mike Tyson and say my little piece on that and what I feel about it. So first and foremost, Cameron Diaz is back in action. Literally, that's what the movie's called. Back in action. Back in action with Jamie Fox, Cameron Diaz. Looks like some CIA shit, ex CIA shit. They was uh they was both ex CIA. It looks like an action packed movie. So Cameron Diaz ain't been in no movie in like ten years. You know what I'm saying? So this is her first time back. Uh, I think she said this is her third time working with Jamie Fox. Here go a little video of her talking about why she was gone so long, COVID and all that type of shit, and how it is to come back to the uh to Hollywood. Check this video out. It's the right time for my family after the COVID. We were in the house for a long time, which was amazing. And the problem was, was that we would probably stay there. We would still be there right now. People would be like, it's over. And I'd be like, no, it's not. It is not. It's not over for me. Um, so I had to push myself. My husband and I were like, you know, and my husband, who's the best, he's just the best. He was just like, you've been supporting us and, you know, building the family and, you know, supporting him in his businesses. He's like, it's time for us to like support you and let mommy like, you know, ascend and do her do her thing. He's like, let me see you do it, girl. I was, <laughs> All right, here we go. So, are you and excited? Also, was that? I'm really excited. I mean, also Jamie Fox. I couldn't say no to Jamie. He said, come with me, and I was like, okay, let's do it. It's our third film together. So, amazing. Well, just- yeah. So as you seen, that was a video of her just talking about, you know what I mean, what happened after COVID and shit and how she was taking a break after COVID and all that, chilling at the home and shit, chilling at the house and all that type of shit. And her husband was pushing her, you know what I'm saying, to get back in the game. So here she is, you know what I mean, got a, got a film with Jamie Foxx. You know what I'm saying, the shit is called Back in Action. They're going to trailer for it. Check it out. Okay, you know that I love our life. What? Tonight, something clicked. For the first time in a really long time, I felt alive again. I felt like the bitch again. Mom! She's fine, it's not that bad! What is going on? We were operatives for the CIA. Like Jason Bourne? Yeah, but we remember stuff. Yeah. I knew you guys were lying about something. I never thought you were cool enough to be spies. I mean, that's not why we're cool. Yeah, that's not why we're cool. superior inner thigh strength he would be dead your inner thighs saved my life so 
So as you've seen, that shit is called Back in Action. Coming out January 17th on Netflix. I'm definitely gonna be tuning into that. Shit looked dope. You know what I'm saying? Look like some suspense shit, action shit. You know what I'm saying? I used to work for the CIA, kind of like how Jason Bourne and shit was. You know what I mean? Going on top secret missions and shit, doing all kind of tactical shit. You know? Yeah, as you seen in the trailer, you know, she jumping on niggas. You know what I'm saying? Explosions and shit. This shit looked dope. I'm definitely hyped for it. January 17th called Back in Action. Literally Back in Action. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Next topic, Meek Mill. Meek Mill ran into a fan. Fan was asking him uh, some shit. Didn't even say nothing about Diddy. And Meek Mill hollered, yeah, no Diddy. You know what I'm saying? Don't disrespect me out here, you heard? This is what Meek Mill said. Didn't nobody say nothing about Diddy. Nothing about it. A lot of people in the comments are saying that it's an ugly breakup. <laughs> <laughs> they get mad at his exes right now. <laughs> so they fucking now all of a sudden, nigga, you was just saying, nigga, I put up a million dollars that the allegations is false. Nigga, you said you'll put up a million that the allegations on Diddy is false, nigga. You was riding for your nigga. My nigga, you feel me? <laughs> now all of a sudden, you know what I'm saying? You like fuck that. It's no Diddy gang. Don't ever disrespect me. Yeah, you know I mean, this is all the shit he said. Didn't nobody even ask you about Diddy, nigga. I mean, you got a guilty conscience. That's a guilty conscience, mate. Ain't nobody say nothing about Diddy. The fan didn't say nothing about Diddy. The fan was just happy to interact with you. And you holler about some no Diddy gang. Don't ever disrespect me. You heard? Like, come on, man. Check this video out. Yeah, y'all yeah, right now. We playing out this motherfucker. This real life. Uh huh. Real life. Yeah, shit, nigga. Yeah. No Diddy gang. Meek Millie in real life. Yeah. Don't ever disrespect me. You Talk hit? that shit, Meek. <laughs> yeah, Meek. You see, you know what I'm saying? That was Meek Mill getting into that nice Maybach. You feel me? Fan seen him. You know what I'm saying? And he brought the Diddy shit up. You know what I'm saying? No Diddy gang. You feel me? Uh, don't ever disrespect me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> The comments in them talk about an ugly breakup is hilarious to me. <laughs> I find a lot of humor in that shit. Yeah, because I mean, that's almost what it seemed like. It seemed like an ugly breakup. And, you know, he bitter out here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Didn't nobody say nothing about Diddy. That nigga was just saying what's up, my nigga. He just asked you a question about how you feel about Diddy, how you feel about the gay accusations, how you feel about audio being leaked, about what sounds as if you taking it in the ass. <laughs> Nobody even asked you about that, but you just said, you feel me, as you see in the clip, no Diddy gang, nigga. Hey, don't ever disrespect me, you heard? <laughs> Nigga, you got a guilty conscience, cuz. What's going on, my nigga? Nobody said nothing about Diddy. Nobody said nothing about disrespecting you. None of that. But I get it, though, my nigga. You feel me? You've been under scrutiny. Hard body. You know what I'm saying? Niggas are saying that you took it in the ass, my nigga. So... I get why you so bitter and quick to defend yourself like that, but it is definitely, what's the fucking word? It is definitely humorous. That's not the word. It's amusing, for sure. <laughs> I am definitely amused by that shit. Um, so yeah, next subject, um, Diddy's son had responded to this shit. He had responded to this shit, uh, responded to the post. I don't know if I'm going to go and find a pic, uh, look on Diddy's son account. I don't follow them dudes. So I don't know if I'm going to go look on his account and find this little shit he responded and all that just to post a pic. Shit, if you want to look for it, go ahead and look for it. You know what I'm saying? But I, I'm not about to go to do Instagram and find a little emoji. All he did was put a, uh, he put, he put shake my head and he put the, the face palm emoji. You know what I'm saying? Uh, on the shit that uh, Meek Mill did when he said what he said and all that. Man, these dudes are gonna get themselves hurt. Now I heard they really pressed up on Ray J and tried to jump him. Ray J put something out the other day. I was gonna talk about that, but I, I don't know if I would have been able to find the video. But he said somebody shot at him and shit. Niggas just tried to kill him and shit. So I don't know if how true is this. We all know Ray J's a trolling ass nigga. So I don't know. He does a lot of shit for clicks and likes and shit like that. He one of them type niggas. So if he feeds off trolling and shit, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know if it was true or not, but he was like, you know, niggas tried to shoot at me. Niggas tried to kill me. We'll, we'll be put a video. We went live on Instagram for a second. I don't know how true that shit is. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, you feel me? I've been shot at before. You know, let's get that out there. You know what I'm saying? I've definitely been shot at before. Not one time in my mind after being shot at, <clears throat> a nigga was trying to fucking kill me. Not one time did I think, let me go on live and say, yo, these niggas just tried to kill me. Uh, these niggas just shot at me. <laughs> 
<laughs> like, if I just get shot at, yo, I'm not coming on Instagram live and reporting to the people like, yo, niggas just try to kill me. Like, nah, my mind is finna be on some get back and how the fuck I'm gonna get back and who did it and all that type of shit, you know? Yeah, but that's me though. I can't speak for the rest of these type of niggas out here in the world today on the internet and shit. So, yeah, uh, yeah, he commented by with the little, you know what I'm saying? He commented with the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, hand on your face emoji and shit it's actually actually got a video for this shit somebody talking about it here check it out justin combs isn't happy about the clip justin combs has responded to the viral video of meek mill remarking no diddy in a comment on a post of a clip from dj academics this is real life meek says in the clip no did again meek millie in real life don't ever disrespect me in response the bad boy mogul's son wrote smh with a facepalm emoji when dj academics shared justin's comment on instagram fans had mixed responses to his defense of his father his kids need to understand their pops is hot and nobody trying to get jammed up with him i'm sure puff has done the same to other celebs throughout the years one user wrote another added the loyalty of all diddy's kids is admirable and very sad i really hope they can have some peace in this meek mill isn't the first artist that justin and the rest of diddy's sons have stood up to for disrespecting their father justin christian and Quincy all made headlines last month for allegedly nearly getting in a physical altercation with Ray J after a Halloween party. The kids were upset with comments Ray had made to the media about the allegations surrounding their father. Diddy is currently behind bars at a jail in Brooklyn while awaiting trial in his case regarding charges of alleged sex trafficking and racketeering. He's already pleaded not guilty and has denied all of the allegations. Yeah, so as you seen, you know what I mean, what she was talking about, you know what I'm saying, the video shit, you know what I'm saying, uh, he put the, 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 the face plant emoji and shake my head, you know what I mean, for people saying no diddy, man, you can't get offended at people saying no diddy, man, you know what I'm saying, I know that's your dad and all, but you can't get offended, you gotta understand what your dad has done, you know what I'm saying, in the, in the public eye, in the light, everybody sees this shit, so everybody's gonna talk about this shit, everybody's gonna be like no diddy, what you gonna go around the world, go on a fucking world tour and listen on the street and walk by people and hope and listen for somebody saying no diddy and then what you gonna do confront him come on my nigga you gonna confront the wrong dude you gonna confront one of these niggas that's going through some shit that has been through a whole lot in the day or in the week and you that you gonna be that icing on the cake that's gonna fuck with the wrong one about some no diddy shit he could be on the phone you know saying something whoop whoop and say no diddy what you gonna do you in the earshot of that you heard some random nigga say that what you gonna confront him come on my nigga you could be confronting the wrong nigga that nigga could have been through hell and back the whole week and he waiting to release some stress out on the nigga or a, a nigga doing some shit like you doing gonna confront a nigga for saying no diddy y'all ain't even built like that i don't even want to get on that no more man you know what i'm saying but y'all were born fucking rich y'all not from a block of hood y'all ain't been through no block of hood type of shit i was born rich man like be humble about that shit be humble about living in your ten thousand square foot fucking mansion on star island in motherfucking florida and shit i mean diddy had the number one house the one these houses are numbered one two three four five that's the addresses this nigga diddy had number one you know what i'm talking about so yeah on this island resides uh future uh rick ross bunch of other high class celebrities and shit you know they all live on this island called star island the houses are numbered diddy had number fucking one you feel me so miss me with that gangster shit street shit y'all not that all right just stop it t-pain t-pain and mark zuckerberg went in the studio people was giving t-pain a whole lot of flock and a whole lot of backlash because of this shit because niggas is like why the fuck is you in the studio with a nigga like mark motherfucking weird looking ass zuckerberg my nigga so a lot of people was uh giving this nigga flack behind him being in the studio with mark zuckerberg we don't understand the shit as a people so they did a cover for get low now i didn't heard a sample of this shit and boy is it horrible <laughs> This shit is fucking horrible. I don't know what the fuck T Pain was thinking about. I couldn't find, of course, I couldn't find a video. You know what I'm saying? They had a bunch of shit talking about it, but the song and shit was playing and shit like that. You know what I mean? So I did find a video though, but definitely not playing the music. Yo, if you like this content and you like this constant content that's been being put out by yours truly, man, go hit that like button, hit subscribe and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Comment too. Share this shit on your social platforms and all that type of shit. You feel me? Yeah. Do that shit right now. Get back to the video. Um, but yeah, it's like a cover for Get Low and it sounds like some country music, fucking backwood studio sitting on the grass with a piece of wheat in your mouth type shit the way it's coming out i mean 
it's just i don't even know how to imitate it or sing it i don't i don't even know it's just bad i mean picture mark zuckerberg covering on uh get low you know to the window to the wall you know now picture mark zuckerberg putting a spin his own spin on that yeah let that sink in think about that mark zuckerberg putting a spin on get low the old hit with Lil John. The fuck? That's gonna make you think, like, what the fuck? Especially when you hear it. Comment on the shit when you hear that shit and let me know what you feel about it. Because that shit is horrible to me. I don't know what he was thinking. But he said it was an anniversary gift for his wife, Mark Zuckerberg's wife. He did that. T Pain was like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I can make a music with drug dealers, murderers, scammers, you know, street dudes. Dude that's boasting about bad shit in their life. And hey, y'all motherfuckers love it. That shit is fire, he said. But then when I make a song with Mark Zuckerberg, everybody want to get their panties in a bunch type shit. This is what T-Pain said. But they go a video and shit talking about it. Check it out. I saw this on the shade room yesterday, and I was like, there's no way Mark Zuckerberg, Zuck, is working with T-Pain on a song. Wait, what? <clears throat> yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Apparently, whenever Mark Zuckerberg and his wife met, I guess Get Low was playing on in the background. Mm -hmm. So on Instagram, Mark explained, that he decided to record Get Low as a tribute to his wife in honor of their anniversary. He said, Get Low was playing when I first met Priscilla at a college party, so every year we listened to it on our dating anniversary. And this year, I worked with T-Pain on our own version of this lyrical masterpiece. Here's the track, and it's also available on Spotify. Day six, I would love if my husband did this, Is right? The, <laughs> yeah, that was the plain white teaification of Get Low. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was talking about T-Pain teamed up with Mark Zuckerberg on that podcast. Um, yeah, it's weird. I don't get it. I don't know why he did that. I don't understand it. I don't know why it would make you think. I mean, I don't know how you think that people was going to be cool with that. I don't know how you didn't think you wasn't going to get any flack for that. I mean, come on, dude. You teaming up with Mark Zuckerberg. Nigga ain't got no music history or none of that type of shit. It's just a rich ass dude who owns this fucking social platform shit that we all own. You know what I'm saying? So I don't get it either. It's trash. I would never play it outside of the sample that I heard, the little three, four seconds. I don't need to hear no more seconds of that song ever in my life again. You feel me? It's bad. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why T-Pain T -Pain be bored, man. I think T-Pain is just fucking rich as fuck sitting in his house and he be fucking bored, yo. That's a fact. This nigga said he could pay 60 bands an hour for gaming on Twitch. S nigga, huh? $60,000 an hour, nigga? For sitting there gaming, nigga. The fuck? This is the type of shit I be hearing about and I be saying, God damn it. I need a fucking piece of that motherfucking pie, my nigga. The fuck, nigga? $60,000, man. All right, so the next subject, <clears throat> Lebanon. So Lebanon apparently fired a drone explosive in Israel, northern Israel, and it hit a nursery. It hit a fucking nursery. This is the type of ugly shit that goes on in these fucking wars and shit that don't get talked about, you know? It's a such thing called splash damage, you feel me? So you can't precisely hit something without hitting some shit around it. So kids and all this type of shit get hit, man, you know what I'm saying? Luckily though, the teacher was able to get all the kids out the classroom and put them in a bomb shelter. So no kids was harmed, which is a good thing. You know what I'm saying? Because the kids ain't got shit to do with this fucking war. They don't give a fuck about no motherfucking war. They, they fucking kids, you know what I'm saying? They, 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 they wake up looking to come to school, see their friends, play with fucking blocks and, you know, do two plus two on a paper and shit like that and learn about fucking three plus three is six and shit. You know, they hype about that type of shit, you know what I'm saying? About pushing the fucking little pebbles on the little track old school shit you know playing minecraft and shit you know yeah they kids man they don't give a fuck about this war shit and they gotta be affected by it and shit you know this type of shit gonna probably follow these kids for a long fucking time and shit you know what i'm saying it's fucked up you know what i mean that uh yeah the agenda is going with this war shit and it's just yeah, that's why a lot of people call this shit genocide i mean it's just hitting kids and shit like that like they don't even give a fuck but yeah check this video out talking about this shit uh talking about how they hit the nursery over in northern israel check it out this is how the one-sided media tells its story. The drone attack by Hezbollah on Israeli nursery, which leave marks on the external walls.
what I'm saying? They fired a drone. Fired a drone. The drone hit the nursery. Uh, she said she was able to get all the kids out the bomb shelter. I mean, all the kids into the bomb shelter before the shit hit. So no kids was harmed, which is awesome. Uh, shout out to that teacher who did that. She need a, she need a round of applause, man. You feel me? If don't nobody give her a round of applause, let me get that teacher a round of applause, man. You know what I'm saying? Give her a round of applause. Yeah, man, you feel me? Got all the kids in the bomb shelter. All of them. The whole class. You know what I'm saying? She had to act fast. I don't know how fast she had to act, but God damn it, she got them all in the bomb shelter before that drone hit. I don't know if they got a signal throughout the city where they was like raising the alarm like, I don't know how it go. You know what I'm saying? But I guess they had, you know, advanced uh, shit and was able to let people know that there's a drone coming or something. I don't know because she definitely foreseen this shit, got word of it or something. Cause she was able to get all the kids in the bomb shelter and save the whole goddamn class. Yeah, she deserved that round of applause that we gave her. Whoever the teacher name is, whoever she is, shout out to her. It's been talks about ceasefire in Gaza. I don't know how true that's gonna come to fruition, but let's hope it do. Fuck war, I'm not with it. It's just a bunch of bullshit. It's a piss contest, you know what I'm saying? It's territories and shit like that. Us trying to push our fucking policies and government onto the way other motherfuckers live that's, that don't have our policies and government. So we trying to be the bullies of the land and push our shit on everybody else's shit this is the way we rock so this is the way we want y'all to rock we using this currency so we want y'all to use that currency this our laws over here so do we want this to be your laws over there it's stupid to me you know but as an average nigga i never understand that shit uh so yeah mike tyson jake paul i didn't write this down but i'm gonna go into it anyway jake paul mike tyson fighting tomorrow just shared a little you know brief little thoughts on that shit how i feel about it i feel mike tyson um needs to whoop his motherfucking ass i respect jake paul you know what i'm saying i definitely respect him as becoming a boxer and wanting to do this shit taking it serious that's what's up you know what i mean i love the sport of boxing i love the science hey get in there and master that science you know what i'm saying learn that shit i advise everybody on the planet to learn some type of boxing skills in your life for sure i mean it's, it's very uh it helps your health out it helps your mental health out you know what i mean you get all frustrations and you learning you know how to really tip a nigga up you feel me <laughs> at the same time so it's fun shit it's definitely uh it's a good discipline about to start doing trials and shit with my son teaching him and shit footwork and all that you know teaching him how to really uh how to really uh manipulate angles step around a nigga step to a side of a nigga you know what i'm saying get your most damage get the most leverage so you can get the most damage off on a person but yeah so mike tyson jake paul fighting tomorrow everybody gonna be watching it i think mike tyson need to whip his motherfucking ass i feel like all mike tyson gotta do is come in there and be about five to ten percent of what he was and i don't think jake paul got a chance you know what i'm saying i feel like all he need to do is be about five ten percent of who he used to be and i don't i don't feel jake paul got a chance i mean we talking about a man with jake paul is what 27 type mike tyson probably has 27 years plus of experience in that boxing ring when it comes to that boxing shit that's a lot of experience and that goes a long way with box so with that being said i don't know I mean, he also is 58 you know he's gonna be 58 when he do this fight almost 60 years old and that should definitely take a toll too so jake paul definitely got a puncher's chance of really like connecting with tyson and possibly knocking him out you know what i'm saying and as uh, bad as i hate to say that shit it's the truth you know he's 60 you know what i'm saying it's not like he's fighting tyson and he's 27 or he's 25 he's 60 you feel me so that's as the body ages your mind might want to do things but your body ain't gonna necessarily agree with it but he looking like a beast in the training videos and shit like that that i've seen he looking real ferocious he knocked out one of his sparring partners which is fucking dope i think he still got that power they said the power is the last thing to go i just don't respect jake paul because he's using his fame and money to climb some type of whatever notoriety in the boxing world i feel like if you want to box nigga, go ahead and join the wbc wbo get in the real ranks go fight some real boxers i mean we've seen you fight an actual boxer for show and that was tommy fury who's who's still in his prime still doing his thing still trying to work his way up and you lost he's the same age as you same stature same body frame all that shit he just taking this boxer shit a little bit more serious than you are i feel like he don't have the money and fame that you got you know what i'm saying so he not picking just fighters oh he's 60 let me fight him oh he retired let me fight him oh he not he ain't fought in three years let me fight him you know that ain't what it's about you know what i'm saying you really want to test yourself you talking about how you always want to test yourself if you really want to test yourself go try
try to be really involved with the boxing shit. Go get yourself a belt. Go fight for that WBL title. Go fight for the WBC title. Why you ain't challenging niggas like Ryan Garcia? Why you ain't challenge that nigga in the ring? Why you ain't challenge Javante Davis? Challenge that nigga. Why don't you challenge real champs? You out here trying to pick target Canelo when we all seen Canelo is on his way out. You know what I'm saying? He's on his way out. He's still doing his thing, but Canelo is coming out of his prime, and now all of a sudden you want to target Canelo. But I see your game, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? I, I see what you're doing, and I don't like it. You know what I mean? Go, go fight a real boxer. Go fight some real boxers. Then I have respect. I can't respect your, your legacy that you creating with these whatever 10 fights that you didn't have, and he ain't fought nobody. You know what I'm saying? You fought niggas who ain't thought about boxing, who ain't thought about fighting. Niggas to retire. Niggas enjoying the fruits of their labor. Niggas is chilling. Ain't fought. Ain't been in the ring or none of that. These are the type of niggas that you choosing to fight. I don't like it. You know what I'm saying? So I hope Tyson beat your motherfucking ass tomorrow, my nigga, at the end of the day. <laughs> I hope Tyson come in there and tap into that old mentality of him being 22 years old. And I hope he beat the dog shit out you for real. Yeah, I, you need a lesson shown. You know what I'm saying? You like a one of them spoiled rich kids, you know, who think they the shit because you out here beating niggas who's retired and ain't thought about a motherfucking ring in whatever years they've been. This nigga Tyson been on a podcast smoking weed every day, chilling, you feel me? Letting his fucking labor nourish him with the money that he making from it. You know what I'm saying? As he should be. He called him out. Woke the beast up type shit and he's 60 years old. I don't know, but I'm definitely going to be tuned in. I'm definitely interested. He does a hell of a job with uh putting, selling fights, promoting fights. Amanda Serrano's definitely going to be on there. I, I like what he's doing with her. She's somebody that's really in the boxing world, really trying to climb the ranks and shit and he definitely is uh paving the way. He's She's definitely on all of his cards, which is dope. Um, So yeah, tomorrow is the fight. Big fight day. I don't know if I'm going to have people, like I said yesterday, I don't know if I'm happy over or not. Uh, if I do, I'll keep the cameras rolling. Um, if I don't, I might take some commentary on the fight and shit. Put that together on a, a little episode and shit like that. But Tim, yeah, that's all I got for today, though. It's episode 131. Today's episode, we went over Cameron Diaz coming back to the acting game, sharing the film with Jamie Foxx. Talked on Meek Mill, seeing a motherfucking, um, seeing a fan in the street and mentioning no Diddy. Uh, mentioning he not part of Diddy gang no more. You know what I'm saying? No Diddy gang. You feel me? Uh, don't disrespect him, he said. We also talked about his son having a response to what Meek Mill said in that video. Uh, then we touched on T-Pain. Teamed up with Mark Zuckerberg. Made some bullshit in the studio. LeBanion got attacked by uh, LeBanion fired a drone into an Israeli nursery school. You know what I'm saying? Teacher was able to save everybody. Got him up out of there. Shout out to her. And I uh, shared my last thoughts on Jake Paul and Mike Tyson just now. So this podcast, uh, Kind's Podcast, episode 131. Thank you all for watching. You know what I mean? Whatever you're doing, wherever you at, tell somebody about the shit, you know? Wherever you're doing. Yeah, like I said before, if you a cashier, you know what I'm saying? People coming through the line. Tell 10 people about this shit, you know? Wherever you at, you in a waiting lobby. You know what I'm saying? You going to the hospital. You got to wait in the lobby. You got to sit there and wait, you know? Somebody right next to you, tell them about Kind's Podcast. You feel me? Yeah, whatever you're doing, going to work out, see somebody on the treadmill, tell them about Khan's podcast. You feel me? You go to the movie theaters, whatever movie you about to see. If you're going to see the Joker, you know what I'm saying? Tell them about Khan's podcast, the episode about, talk about the Joker and how fucking trash that shit is. Yeah, but it's Khan's podcast episode 131. Hope y'all have a good day. This is the weekend before the weekend. Thursday, pre-weekend before the weekend. You feel me? I hope y'all have a good one. It's Khan's motherfucking podcast. You feel me? Enjoy these credits. <laughs>
Make me don't you 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 Make me don't you